Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we are returning to Suzerain, which is a political role-playing, choose-your-own-adventure strategy game, which we have been playing on this channel for 21 episodes now. This is episode number 22. This will be the conclusion of the series. This is one of my favorite games. There's a lot to love about it, but basically you are a fictional president in a fictional country in a fictional Cold War, or effectively a developing nation that has dealt with a lot of political turmoil, but you already know this because we've been doing this series for 21 episodes. In our last, in two episodes ago, we had a major development where there was attempted coup on our life, which we survived, uh, or not coup, but an attempted assassination on our life, which we survived. Last episode, we dealt with half of our cabinet resigning, our trusted friend resigning due to health, uh, several people in our cabinet resigning due to political differences. We went to our political party to try and win the nomination for the presidency. We lost that election in our in our party. And so we decided to break away from our party rather than resign. Uh, we decided to break away from that party and decided to try and win a third party candidacy for the presidency. Basically, we're pulling a Teddy Roosevelt the ball while, while we're still in office. We don't have good numbers. I think like 16% of the population supports us. The country is in rioting and revolution, not revolution, but there's rioting. We've joined the ATO, which is sort of the NATO version of this game. We've gone capitalist. It says the depression and the economy is not going great. We do have projected growth, which looks better, um, but I guess maybe that just hasn't materialized yet. And we're coming up to the election. So I don't know if we can win. I don't know if we have options to try and steal the election. Uh, we had a, I believe it was a, a friend of ours before he resigned, warned us the military was preparing a coup. So that sounds ominous. The one other time I played this game, when I played all the way through, I had like the ideal outcome. The economy was great. My wife loved me. My party loved me. I won re-election in a landslide and everything was happy. Joy, 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 happy. We were at peace. So that playthrough, everything went great. This playthrough has not been as smooth. This is on the 2.0 update. I believe the game is currently on sale at least until sometime in october um for 5.99 there's a dlc coming out for this game soon called rizia kingdom of rizia so i'm really excited to see that that'll add a monarchy and a new story to the game um so we'll see what that's supposed to come up before the end of the year there's a link in the description to a live stream which the developers did for the kingdom of rizia dlc but that's enough of me rambling. I've been talking for over two and a half minutes. Let's jump into the conclusion of the series. Hope you guys enjoy the series. Leave your thoughts below and we'll see what happens. I guess we'll find out. Dinner at the president's mansion. Hi, Papa. How was school today? I won a prize at the science fair. Honestly, I think they were teaching girls different stuff before because they knew they were smarter than boys. <laughs> you might be right. Mama's in there. I got to do some homework before dinner. God, Anton, don't startle me like that. You know I'm still on edge after the parade. Right, that was a close call. I haven't been that scared for you since the ball. Why don't you go fix yourself a drink in the living room? I'll let you come know when dinner's ready. Anna came rushing past the stairs and made a beeline for the coffee table. She picked up her pencil case. Almost forgot that. What do you hear from your brother these days? I think he's getting really into the army training. Is Swordland run by a bunch of weaklings? What? Of course not. Dinner's ready. Now that we're all here, I wanted to say something. I know the past four years have been hard on all of us. I was too busy focusing on the needs of the Swordish people that sometimes I forgot about what Swordland's most important people, my own wife and daughter. I know I shouldn't have, I haven't been there as much for you as I should have. I hope I can make it up to you someday. But right now there's no time. We need to get out of Swordland. All of us. 
Once the election's over, I'm taking you both on a holiday. Anton, I think you should quit politics. Not just drop out of the election. Retire. What? Why? With everything that's happened, I don't think you belong in government. And every day you stay, that gives an opportunity for your opponents and chance to smear your reputation in ours. They're making fun of me at school because of you, Papa. You being president, it hasn't been easy on any of us. Maybe we could go back to the way things were before. I mean, I supported the military, so why would they coup me? Sorry, Monica, I've got to keep going. You never did know when to give up. Of course. <sighs> well, hopefully they don't coup me. I guess we're going to find out. I don't really have any money. This is like arcing up pretty darn considerably. Like That's what I don't get. The Maroon Party! <laughs> I'm running as an independent. Hell yeah! What did we do? I should have warned against non-essential air travel. Civilians are discouraged from booking flights except in the case of business purposes to visit sick and dying relatives. That doesn't sound good. <laughs> Is that like the precursor to a coup? Military assumes interior security duties. With the new powers that had been granted, the Swordish military assumed the responsibility for keeping peace within the Swordish borders, overriding local police authority. Oh, that doesn't sound good either. Two minutes to midnight. Uh-oh. Well, here comes the coup. could see Yosef standing outside accompanied by a few soldiers. What are you doing? What's going on at this hour? We need to talk, Mr. President. This is urgent. Tell me what it's about. Take Deanna. Hide somewhere. Okay, so Yosef, even though he's the one that I've supported this whole time, and I've given him money and all of that jazz, and I've built up the military, is going to lead a coup against me? What crimes? Grand National Assembly is hereby abolished, along with the immunity of members of the Parliament. In addition, a curfew is now in effect and all gatherings are banned until further notice. All government officials who are suspected of betraying their country will be tried in military court and made to answer for their crimes. You're destroying our democracy? No, we're protecting the country. Well, I guess I'm about to die. There's no need for handcuffs. I know when I have no way out. Should have fired him. I, did I have the chance to fire Yosef? I don't think I had the chance. Well.
And the growth stopped. Yeah, sometime later. I guess I should have uh, left and retired from political office. Anton Rock Prison. I was making my 14th scratch on the wall when a warden opened the cell door. It was my first time seeing a person since the military detained me. He put handcuffs on my wrists and we started walking. I barely had enough energy to ask where we were going. I just assumed the worst. He told me today was the day of my trial. While we were walking, I caught a glimpse of my reflection in a metal door. My beard had grown and my cheeks were sunken. The conditions I was held in were showing. I was, only, I was the only one loaded onto the prison truck. After a couple hours passed, we finally came to a stop. After I exited the vehicle, I held my head up and saw the insignia of the Supreme Court. Soldiers grabbed my arms and led me inside. They gestured toward the table in the courtroom. Looking around, I saw the flags of the Swordish Armed Forces hanging down from the walls covering the crest of the Supreme Court. The room was completely empty except for me and soldiers on guard. I looked at the vacant seat in the bench. The door opened and General Josef Lancia entered alone. The soldiers saluted him and he saluted back. I watched him take his seat comfortably. Normally you're supposed to rise when a judge entered this room, Mr. Rain. Good. No time to waste. Let's begin. This military court will now handle the case of Anton Rain, the former president of Swordland. Do you know why you're here? No, I do not. You're accused of high treason against Swordland, Mr. Rain. High treason? I would never betray my country. You know more than that more than anybody. Shut your mouth. You'll only speak when you're spoken to. You have failed to govern your people, and instead, as a result of your actions, they're revolting. If you can't put an end to this, we will. You spat on the very foundations that this country was built upon. It is clear to me that you're actively trying to destroy our country from the inside, and any enemy of Swordland must pay the ultimate price. What do you have to say for yourself, Mr. Rain? I gave you support, so you can protect this country. Instead, you have chosen to depose in your own president. What we are doing is what we are assigned to do, protect the country. At this very moment, we are protecting it from you. It doesn't matter what I say, does it? Not really. The hell are my like what what's the point of any of these options? Is there a way out? Is there a way to survive? <sighs> yes, there's a way out, Slicer. What the hell am I supposed to say? I see what this is. This is all a ploy to end Swordish democracy along with my presidency. I won't play along. I'll make out of this one day and you'll be sorry for your life. You know what? Screw you. I see what this is. This is all a ploy to end Swordish democracy along with my presidency. I won't play along. Your lies know no bound. Fortunately, we don't care if you play along or not. One day, the people of Swordland will look back on this and curse your name for what you have done. You're wrong, Mr. President. They will thank me for getting rid of you. No need to delay the further. Well, there we go. Joseph Lancia tapped the gavel. The sound echoed in the empty courtroom. You did your best for Swordland, no matter what. The next words you heard were hereby decide you were guilty. You thought about how you would go down in history as the victim of yet another one of Swordland's coups. But he wasn't done speaking. For the magnitude of the crimes you have committed against Swordland, I am sentencing you to life in prison. Soldiers grabbed your arms and started walking toward the door. As you were walking, you worried about the future of your family, declared you would take revenge, accepted your fate. Worried about the future of your family. 
Your cell was cold and lonely. The only decorations you put on in the damp, dark walls were photos of Frank and Diana. For a while, reading was the only thing you could do, after finishing the precious books sent by Monica. You kept yourself busy, writing your own memoir. You were happy that at least your family was allowed to visit once a month. You learned in prison after two years the military junta finally gave power back to the people. The political parties and the Grand National Assembly were re-established. Vulcan just kills you. You hoped this would be your way out. Frank finally visited you for the first time in years, bringing along his wife and son. It reminded you of your own family in better times. You held your grandson for the first time. He squirmed and started crying in your arms. Frank told you he was now a senior army official on track to the higher ranks. You congratulated him. After seven years in jail, Sordland's new president finally granted amnesty to political prisoners from the military rule days. You looked at yourself in the mirror as you were packing up your belongings to leave. You had grown old. You took your first step outside. Freedom felt good. Monica, Diana, and Frank were waiting for you. Unfortunately, the years hadn't been kind to Monica. But they hadn't been kind to you either. Getting used to being a free man took years. You finally felt confident enough to plan out what to do with the rest of your life chose to retire to the countryside. Life was good. You took up various hobbies like gardening and woodworking. Out of boredom, you became a carpenter. Your new pastimes earned you just enough money to get by. All the time in the world. A week after your 66th birthday, a woman knocked on your door. She was a young upstart journalist fascinated by your life story. No matter what you did, she kept coming back. Finally, you gave in. She said she was working on a book about you. You just wanted to finally have peace of mind. After many hours of interviews, she said she had enough information and disappeared from your life. You looked up the name she had given you, but you couldn't find it anywhere. You suspected she'd used an alias. You wondered why. You heard a knock on the door. It was the delivery of a man with a large, heavy package. The package was filled with copies of books. There was a small note on it. Thank you. Carol Circus. You picked up the book. It was titled Suzerain. The story of Anton Rain. Ha! <laughs> Lol. Okay. Between 1954 and 1958, 1. 1.6 million people lost their jobs. 57% fewer maternal deaths were recorded. Wow, that's a victory. During the street clashes, 52 police officers and 228 protesters were killed. 8,821 protesters were arrested. 18,320 people were arrested for their suspected ties to the Red Youth. 102,345 conscripts joined the workforce. 3,390 people with Blutish descent were jailed and 239 were killed. 389, or 3,899 cases were delayed. 614,470 women joined the workforce, and 805,380 girls were enrolled in secondary education for the first time. 81,340 companies declared bankruptcy. 259,498 students left secondary education without graduating. 5,200 state employees lost their jobs, while three oligarchs obtained 20% of the Swedish economy. 1,143 news articles were altered. Hmm. Well, at least I didn't die. I mean, there's nothing else for me to do, right? Peter Vector is like a perfect centrist. At least, at least Graf didn't uh, win her election, right? So Carol Vis or what was the name of the person? Carol, was it Visky? Or no, who was the author of the book again? Was it Visky's daughter or was it um, the person who got killed at the beginning? Or Circus? 
Bernard Circus was the um, political person who was assassinated at the start, right? So I'm guessing that was like his kid. Or there was some, I can't remember what circus, like where he, what, what he did. He was like the, but I thought he was the left. Yeah. Bernard circus. He was like the left wing guy who got assassinated in the intro. And then we said a nice thing at his funeral. So I'm guessing she did her thing because we paid respect to her father. So she was trying, you know, because we were, I'm guessing that the way the game treats it is like, because you're kind to him, she had a soft spot for me and wrote a probably flattering portrait of us, I'm assuming. Okay. Well, that's it. That's the end. Suzerain is such a goddamn great game. That was, I had like the ideal ending my first time playing through and that was less than ideal. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, guys, that's it. It's Suzerain. We're definitely going to play Rizia, Rizia when it comes out. Um, I'm excited about that. So we'll see. I'm not sure when it's coming out, but it's supposed to be before the end of the year. I hope you guys enjoyed this series. That's going to wrap this series up. But, uh, but yeah. It's such a great game. Like, I know, like, reading lots of text isn't everybody's cup of tea, and it's not, you know, not every game is, like, works in this style, but there's such clear passion in this game, in creating this game. There's such brilliant storytelling, and the writing is just immaculate. This is just, I think this is one of the best games that I've played in the last... Oh, may, I don't know, if, maybe forever, I don't know. I mean, but it is a it is a genuinely great job of using text and storytelling to honestly, like, make an emotional toll when, when you know, I knew that maybe a coup was coming, but I didn't know for sure that I was going to be overthrown. And honestly, it kind of it kind of hits you. It's like, fuck, that's really going to happen. And, you know, my previous time, I won the re-election, and it was a satisfying result. We had a good economy. It was before the 2.0 update, so some things were simplified, but... I just, the more layers they add to this game, the more complexity they add to it. You, there's a lot of guessing. It's not a clear like, oh, move slider up, money gets better. Move slider down, money gets worse. Like, it's not that kind of strategy game. It's it's just, it's a game about storytelling. And I think it's a game that really captures a lot of the nuance and challenges of politics. And there's not a lot of games out there that do that. There's a lot of political games. There's not a lot of political games that feel authentic. You know, a lot of them are just like, I'm going to optimize these things. And, you know, it's not, that's not how the world works. That's not how politics works. There's no slider that, uh, you know, a president or a prime minister can just do and say, make me money and make things better as much as anybody wants to tell you that it's just, a, you know, that, that it's a simple matter of one dogma or the other being superior. There's always shades of gray. There's always nuance in every situation. And I think this game does a good job of that. That's not to say, you know, when I say there's nuance in every situation, that that's not, there are obviously good and bad outcomes and decisions, but there is often the complexity that you see in games like this is just rarely, rarely captured in other strategy games, which tend to be more about min-maxing. And there's a place for those games, and I enjoy those games, but this does something very unique that only a few other games have done. Um, I think Hidden Agenda was one of those games back in the, was it the 80s or 90s when it came out, which is similar. Um, I don't, not to this quality, not to this length. Um, but yeah, there's not a lot else out there like this. This is, this is tremendous. But I hope you guys enjoyed this series. I know I always enjoy playing this game. Uh, I may play it again offline, but uh, we'll definitely cover Rizio when it comes out. Uh, and without further ado, I know this is a shorter episode, but we got to the end of the series. There's not really much else for me to add. Um, until next time, this is the Historical Gamer once again saying thank you very much for watching. And until next time, we're out.